Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Con Report wherever you get your podcast. You're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media, A-M-P-I-R-E. Always much appreciated when you tune in. You can also become a member of the show. And for you members of the show, I had a, I had a put out a few minute video slash audio recording on Wednesday talking about uh, talking to a former player about Dan Quinn and that defense and also a little bit about what Anthony Lynn adds, and I'm going to go into that more in depth now, but I wanted, I gave the members a little bit of a brief update before recording, you know, that they got this before you guys are going to get this. That's one of the benefits of being a member. You're going to get a lot of stuff anyways, regardless. So I always appreciate everybody who tunes in. I'll make that very, very clear. Also, you can read my work on ESPN.com. And I have a story up now about all of Washington's new hires. They made a flurry of them earlier on Wednesday, including, you know, filled out the front office, reassigned Martin Mayhew and, and, and Marty Herney got their roles specified. So to recap some of Wednesday's flurry of moves, they hired Anthony Lynn as their run game coordinator, expecting him to probably be the running backs coach. That wasn't official when, you know, as of when I'm recording this, hired Daryl Tapp to be their defensive line coach. And then in the front office, they did this. And I want to read off what, because I had a story up on ESPN about this. They hired Lance Newmark from the Lions. He's going to be, um, uh, you know, serve as basically the assistant general manager. And then Martin Mayhew will be in a, um, He's now going to um, be a, he'll be the um, a senior personnel executive slash advisor to Peters. And then Herney is just going to be kind of in an advisory role. Um, so that's going to complete the re- the front office, I guess, restructuring under Peters. Um, Newmark spent 26 years with the Lions, considered a very, a per- considered a good scout. And I know, um, you know, he's been through three regimes. And if you've survived multiple regimes in one place, you must be doing something well. The Lions, of course, have had their ups and downs during that time. A lot of ups, a lot of some ups and a lot of downs. But the fact that he survived three regimes, I think, speaks highly of him. And so we'll see where this goes. But um, they did have good intel on him. I, I know Peters, I believe, knew him. But also Rick Spielman, brother of Chris Spielman, who works for the Lions, would certainly have good intel on him as well. But today, what I want to do is talk about a little bit more about Anthony Lynn, because I think that's a pretty big hire for for Washington. And I think um, I like the way this offensive staff has been built. And that was one of the things that for Dan Quinn, that he had to make sure he got right because of how things go. If you're a defensive head coach or a defensive minded head coach, you've got to really make sure you get that offensive side right and set up not only just a situation where you can have a good offense, but also have a good succession plan. I'm going to explain why I think they're in a good spot with that. Um, I talked to talked to somebody in the game earlier today about Lynn, just text him, Hey, what do you think? And gave me a call. And like, he raved about what he felt like Lynn could add to this, to this organization. And the reason, a couple of reasons why he liked him. He likes, he liked the runs, the run uh, designs that he's been a part of. It can run the inside zone, the outside zone, counter or gap schemes and all that. And so he liked that flexibility in the run game um, felt like, you know, good, some good run game principles. And I think that really stood out to this person. Uh, other people that you talk to likes that he's, he's coached with, he played in Denver with Mike under Mike Shanahan. So that's where a lot of these principles with the Kyle Shanahan offense, of course, started with his dad, Mike. And that was, you know, he got a firsthand witness to the how that run game could work then working in with for with shanahan the last couple of years in san francisco not only but kyle shanahan but also bobby turner one arguably the best running backs coach in the nfl chris furster one of the top offensive line coaches and a run game coordinator as well so we had firsthand seats to that level of success with the 49ers and so you can draw upon those principles as well that 49er run game is one that gets a, gets copied quite a bit um, around the league. And, and that's that Shanahan system that that tree has done very well offensively in the NFL. So I think that was another benefit to hiring him as well. And he's been around Greg Roman, good run game principles too. And I think, you know, I think there's the other part of that too, is he's seen, 
you can, you, he's watched Kyle Shanahan. You, it's not just under center that they've had success running the ball in San Francisco, that jet action, that jet, you know, that jet motion action that to be honest, Scott Turner used more of that than what they did last year under the enemy. But that's something where you can help marry and help the run game out of the gun, which in that air raid offense, the Kingsbury offense, you probably, you're going to use a lot more of. So this is a way to incorporate some of what he learned in San Francisco with what you might want it with under Kingsbury. And I think that's an important, important aspect in all this is can how do you marry that? And I think that's one way to do it, that he brings ideas that he's seen, but not just him. Brian Johnson was part of a, a highly successful run game in Philadelphia, especially in 2022 in more ups and downs last year, I think, you know, for a variety of reasons, but that run game is coming from a highly successful RPO run game system. Then you also have, um, you know, Bobby Johnson, the line coach. Now, whether or not, I don't, we'll see how good the line develops under him, but he was part of a good run game in New York. Last year, a ton of injuries on the line, you know, quarterback, all this stuff. But in 2022, the Giants had the, were fourth in the NFL in rushing yards per game. So that's where, so like when you look at this, like Kingsbury obviously is a pass game guy, but he has kind of buttressed hit what he maybe can't do as well with guys who do do that well. And that's Lynn Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> Um, now the protection has to be better than what it was in New York. And I don't know all the reasons why it failed up there. Clearly the line coach is going to be part of that, but the run, I'm just talking about the run game aspect. It did. He's coming from a system that worked, um, what he brings here. Don't know, but that, but he is coming from a place that worked, um, pretty well in the run game before this year. And, um, before, and before he got fired, you know, that's, that's, that's what happened. But what this does do is it provides Washington choices on offense. And just, you know, the big talk was the succession plan. You've heard me talk a lot about that. I think this is another rung in that plan where you have, if, listen, what you want is for this to go well and Kingsbury to leave for a head coaching job in two years because you know it's going well at that point. If that happens, now you have multiple options in case guys are still here. Brian Johnson, with Anthony Lynn, and possibly to beat a pitcher, depending on how he progresses with this as well, but you have options. And I think having, you now have two guys who have head coaching experience as well as coordinating experience who can understand what is going on. Like Anthony Lynn can understand what um, Kingsbury is trying to do as a former coordinator. You can understand, okay, he's trying, he's you see more of the big picture. And I think that's going to help I, I, on paper that should help as well. And so, now, this is always, as we, as you know, this time of the year is always for speculation and how things can work. I think that's how it can work. Um, will it? We'll find out. You got to get a good quarterback and that makes everything look better. But I do, you know, the key will be, can, how do you marry all this stuff? And, you know, if, if, if Kingsbury says, well, I want to do this out of the gun and I want to run, you know, then can you get to Johnson, between Johnson, Brian Johnson, and then um, also Anthony Lynn, can you come up with runs that are able you're able to do out of this certain same look to at least marry those concepts? And one of the other things that this other person told me that he said, well, number one, the receivers are going to have to block now because in a Kyle Shannon off Shanahan offense, that's what the receivers do. So if you're the run game coordinator, you're going to get those receivers to block. And I think that's been very, I think again, guys like Terry McLaurin, I think has been Terry does a lot of things very well. I think as a blocker, I think he's been more inconsistent the last two years than I think that he and they would like. Um, and I think Deami Brown blocks extraordinarily well, very well. And, but he's got to do other things well to stay on the field because too often when he come in the game, you pretty much knew it was probably going to be a run in this air raid offense. He could, he could be more of a deep threat. He's going to have to be more of a deep threat. But if you want to stay on the field more in the run game, you better also produce as a receiver as well. But that's what you can look forward to here is maybe getting, maybe be on the lookout for a bigger, more physical receiver to help in that area. Um, the other thing is too, and then someone else is telling me like, you've got to, they're going to have to convince these receivers to sell the release more. Because when you watch like the 49ers receivers, they're selling the release. So you got to sell it to make it look like they are going to run the ball here and boom, now you're turning up field 
And now you have the corner biting on that release hard. And maybe now you get an advantage down the field. So those are little, those are subtle little details in the run game that can come from that Shanahan system. It's why those coaches are, are kind of desired throughout the NFL because they do that. That concept is very good, but that's one of the things that you're going to have to, to look for. And again, I like that there is a diversity of staff here. I think you have some guys coming from different offenses that can maybe bring some ideas that you can incorporate. What you don't want is a mishmash of things. You need to have, make sure that it does marry together. Well, otherwise it's just a bunch of pile of different concepts, but if they're not paired well together, it's, it's going to be hard pressed to work. Um, but I do think you have that opportunity now to do that. And then, you know, so I think that's one of the things I think the Anthony Lynn hire is, is a good one. And, you know, it's funny because he did San Francisco was really good, but you had Bobby Turner out there. You had Chris Furster. And so whatever Lynn did, his impact was going to be maybe dwarfed a little bit by being a, by that, those are the guys who are going to get the credit because they've done it for so long out there. But Lynn's background is as a running backs coach and the run game coordinator, and he's been an offensive coordinator. So I think that all bodes well, I think for this offense on paper, it looks like they've done a nice job putting this together. Now, you have to go make it work. I also like the, you know, I think the hiring of Ken Norton Jr. as a linebackers coach, probably a better, you know, I was talking to somebody out in Seattle. They felt like he was maybe better as a position coach than he was as a coordinator, which is why, you know, what he did as a coordinator at Seattle doesn't really matter is, you know, he ended up getting fired from that, but what he's going to do as a position coach, my understanding is the linebackers really liked playing for him when he was in that in that role in Seattle. So we'll see how that translates here. Larry Izzo, the special teams coach, good reputation, built good special teams out in Seattle. So I think I think they're solid there as well. Daryl Tapp was hired as a defensive line coach, played here for a year or two, and again, has a good reputation. See where it goes, because that, that was one of the problems the last couple of years was the D-line with all that talent never – quite meshed as much as they wanted it to they're going to have that's going to be the and what again it was never just one or two guys sometimes it was more one but it was at some point all of them did a little bit of that freelancing and it and it and it could mess things up so getting that group in general to play together and i know some of the, obviously montez gone chase gone and it's going to be a very different group because you do have some guys who backups you know james with williams casey Tool who are also free agents. So it's going to be a very different looking group, but what you want is for that group to be uh, to play together better than what it has the last couple of years. And the strength of course, will be up the middle with, with Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen. So anyway, that's it for me. Oh, by the way, press conference is Tuesday at two 30 talking to Cliff Kingsbury and Joe Witt jr. The new coordinators. We're going to get the, the, all the assistant coaches, the uh, position coaches, in a group, uh, just kind of a gathering next week. But on Thursday, it's the coordinator interview press conferences. So I will be back after that with an update or just impressions from talking to Kingsbury and Joe Wood Jr. Hopefully I have a guest on to go over all that stuff and bring that to you. And, you know, so there you go. I believe that will be up Thursday night or Friday morning. So I'll talk to you next time. 